Music has always been composed by humans. A composer would go into a study, write and rewrite until he or she got their masterpiece. This has been the case for classical composers, pop artists, and everything in between. At least until recently. Now computers are starting to write their own music. In ancient Greece, Pythagoras believed that all beauty descended from mathematical logic in the natural world. This is the same man who created the Pythagorean Theorem. Because he believed everything could be described through math, legend says that he also composed music with math. As far as history knows, Pythagoras and his followers were the first people to use algorithms to create music. Quite predictably, this has been dubbed algorithmic music. Algorithmic music is created when input, or data, is translated into mathematical values. Then those mathematical values are processed into musical values. Data could be anything. For example, a couple thousand years after Pythagoras, Mozart created something called dice music, or this in German. Depending on what you roll with the dice, you go to a table, find the pre-composed piece, and repeat until you have a complete minuet. Algorithmic music was never considered anything more than a game. It was mostly a fun pastime. While there are literally millions upon millions of variations, many algorithmic compositions usually come out choppily. The only way to avoid this choppiness is by painstakingly crafting each pre-composed piece to fit with other pieces seamlessly, and then making sure it fits in every combination. This is very hard, and even impossible, to do since there could be millions of combinations. Algorithmic music can be done purely with pen and paper, like regular math. And, just like regular math, using computers makes it a lot easier and faster. With the rise of computers also came the rise of digital composers. Programs for digital music composition have existed since the 50s. One of the coolest and most advanced has to be Emmy. David Cope, the father of Emmy and one of the leaders in musical intelligence, created her as a way to escape writer's block. Afraid he couldn't write an opera in time, he wrote the program to help gather musical ideas that he could modify and use in his own compositions. David Cope intentionally wanted the program to write in his style, so Emmy uses a strategy called recombinant music. This means the program has two major processes, one to chop up and two to reassemble. Emmy is actually very similar to Mozart's dice music, but she's a bit more intelligent. Both programs need a catalog of musical ideas to draw from. In dice music, that catalog is pre-composed. Emmy, on the other hand, scans multiple musical pieces and is able to chop up the piece and use specific musical structures. However, Emmy is able to modify the music under very specific parameters to make music that makes sense. With certain abilities like being able to find places of tension and resolution within musical structures, and specific modification techniques like repeated themes in different keys, Emmy not only creates music that makes sense, but preserves the style of the composer. It doesn't sound like anything you'd ever expect from a computer. By taking musical ideas from existing pieces, it sounds organic. It sounds like it was composed by a human being. This is because Emily Howe has the musical vocabulary of a human, not a computer. Here, listen to a rag by Scott Joplin. And now listen to Emily's rag. They sound very similar, and you probably didn't notice that the first example actually wasn't by Scott Joplin. That was Emily's creation. The second one was by Joplin. David Cope took Emily one step further and had her compose her own music. Emily Howe couldn't compose out of thin air, so Cope began for her. He composed some pieces and fed them to her, and she created pieces out of those pieces. Then those pieces that she created would be fed in again and again. Eventually none of Cope's influences remained in the music. 